Strasti. Oh. Dusty. Hey, my name is Vasil and welcome to or welcome back to another episode of Vasil Eats the World, where I tell you a little bit about a country and try out one of its signature dishes. If you're new here and you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps me out. And since you're already down there, you might as well hit the like button. Now today, we'll be taking a deep dive into what some might say is the little sites of heaven here on Earth, Bulgaria. Located in Eastern Europe in the Balkan region, which, if you haven't already, go check out the Albania episode, as well as the Bosnia and Herzegovina episode. Bulgaria is bordered by Romania to the north by the Danube River, Greece and Turkey to the south, and Serbia and North Macedonia to the west. To its east is the Black Sea, where you will find, to my surprise back in 2012, beautiful subtropical beaches. Now, as a Balkan country, it's no surprise that one of its more prominent geographical features is the Balkan Mountains that splits the country in half horizontally. To the southeast, you have the Pyrene and Rila mountain ranges, with Rila's Mount Musala being not only Bulgaria's highest point, but the highest point in the Balkans. The country's lowest point, however, would be the Black Sea coast, which is where I spent my time when I was there. Here you will find many beach towns and cities, such as Varna, Burgas, and Sozopol, with tourists from all over Europe vacationing there. The rest of the country, roughly one-third, consists of lowland plains. One thing you might not have known about Bulgaria is that it's famous for its roses. There's an area called Rose Valley that produces a significant portion of the world's rose oil supply. Every year in early summer, rose festivals are held throughout the valley, where you will find parades, dancing, and a pageant where our rose queen will be crowned. You can even help out and pick some of the roses from the fields yourself. Speaking of rose queens, let's talk people. Now here's a random fact about me. I once did a project in high school where I gave a presentation on a country. That country happens to have been Bulgaria, where I learned that the country has a declining population problem. That was back in 2007 when the population was 7.5 million people. Now, over 15 years later, it's still a problem, with the population now standing at just under 6.5 million people. This trend has been going on since 1989, with many young people leaving the country for better economic opportunities. Currently, ethnic Bulgarians make up 85% of the population, with Bulgarian Turks, they were once part of the Ottoman Empire, making up 8%. Another notable ethnic group are the Romani, who officially make up 4% of the population, but that number is believed to be closer to 11%. About two thirds of the country identify as Eastern Orthodox Christian, with another 10% identifying as Muslims. You can find many old churches and mosques dotting the country, many of which are stunning. Now with such a homogenous country, some unique folk traditions have survived throughout the centuries most of which have to do with rituals using fire to banish evil spirits and illnesses. These can manifest in various ways, such as witches, zme, or semodivas. One such ritual is anastenaria. Anastenaria, anastenaria, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't know. Where for three days, communities celebrate by dancing, music, and animal sacrifices, culminating on the final night with a walk over red hot coals. Another tradition is kukeri, where men dress up in elaborate costumes to scare off evil spirits. Now let's talk food. Now as I said at the end of my last episode, my memory of Bulgarian food is a lot of soups and salads, and that's very much true about Bulgarian cuisine. However, to this list we can add grilled meats and stews as staples as well. And due to its geographical location, it's very much influenced by Greek and Turkish cuisine. One thing that is notable about Bulgaria is that they really love yogurt, as they typically eat more of it than any other European nation. And that is what we'll be eating today, along with arguably the national dish of Bulgaria, Shopska salad. Again, did I pronounce that right? I, I really don't know. I just, let me know down in the comments. Shopska salad is a very simple dish with few ingredients that incorporates the colors of the Bulgarian flag, white, green, and red. And finally, with all that introduction out of the way, Let's get to the cooking. Now we'll start with one cucumber, diced, and then we're gonna go ahead and scoop this up into our bowl, like so. One yellow pepper, color doesn't really matter, diced. And then go ahead and scoop that up and put it into our bowl. We might need a bigger bowl, it's already kind of full. I'll see what I can do about that. Next, we have one red onion, diced. And we're just gonna scoop it up, like so. Put it in the bowl, definitely not big enough. 
guess I'm gonna switch it up. And finally, last but not least, three tomatoes. Diced. And then we're gonna take these, scoop them up, and throw them onto our bowl. Like so. Boom. So here I have a bigger bowl. And I'm just gonna dump the contents of this into it. Oh! Oh no! Technical difficulties. So next we're gonna add two tablespoons of sunflower oil. One, two, as well as one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. One. Some salt and pepper to taste. Give that a good mix. Smells really good. We're gonna start by taking some of our salad, putting it on our plate. And then we're gonna take some parsley. Do that a rough chop. Okay. Scoop it, put some on top, and then we'll take some of this Bulgarian cheese called Sireni or Sirene? Sirene? I don't, I really don't know how to pronounce it, but we're gonna take some of it, okay? And it's called, uh, it's basically like feta cheese, similar in consistency. I'm just gonna take that. Crumble it. Sprinkle it on top. And then on the side, I'm gonna throw on some yogurt. That's good. And there you have it. Shafska salad with some yogurt. It has all the colors of the Bulgarian flag, the white, the green, the red of the tomatoes. Finally, it's time to dig in. But before that, I'm gonna have a little rakia like I did at the start of this episode. And as you can tell by my reaction, it didn't sit well with me. It had been a long time since I last had rakia. We have a similar drink. I'm pretty sure it's the same drink. We just call it arake in Ethiopia. Or if you're Ethiopian, just you can roast me for how to pronounce that, but arake. I was really sick the last time I had it. Like I had a stuffed nose, so couldn't really taste it that well. My uncle was the one who gave it to me because I was at his house while I was sick. And he's like, oh, this is really good for when you're sick. Like it'll help your immune system. And so he just gave me a shot of arake and I was like, woo! And then he just laughed. But uh, so anyway. Some arake, or some rakia. Okay, so here's the weird thing about it. Like, it burns more than anything else. Like the taste, it's not, I'd rather have a shot of this than vodka or tequila, or any just, you know, straight up shot of any hard alcohol. But it just burns more for some reason. But the aftertaste is quite pleasant. It's, it has like a fruity aroma, like it coats the tongue. Like I can still, it has like this fruity essence to it. I don't know what it is. I could probably look it up. I'm gonna look it up later and just, there'll be some text at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I can see how like, first thing in the morning, this would wake you up for a hundred percent. But at the same time, I don't, uh, apparently though, this people drink this when they have their shops to salad. Anyway, so our first bite, here it goes.
Okay, so my first thought is I've definitely had this before in Bulgaria. It's been a long time since I've last had it, but it's not my first time. For some reason, I don't really, I didn't really remember how it tasted, so I was kind of like thinking, oh, it's a salad, how good can it be? But this is surprisingly good. All the flavors are there. You got the cheese working with the, with the cucumber and the onion and the tomato and the sunflower oil. Like it's all really well balanced crunch with a nice creamy texture of the cheese. Like all of it's there in terms of flavor, textures, it has it all. It's just, and then it's not too hot, not too cold. And also, I don't know why I say it's not too hot. Like, it's a salad. It's not supposed to be hot. But what I'm trying to say is like, it's just a nice temperature. I can see how during the summer, especially if this had like chilled vegetables, it would slap. It would really slap. Okay, now for some yogurt. I'm not a big fan of yogurt, but unless it's like in a sauce of some kind. It's my first time having plain yogurt in years. It's all right. Again, I'm not a fan. Like if you remember the Bangladesh episode, I'm pretty sure I made a, a drink called Lakash. Uh, I don't remember. If, if you go back, you can see it in the Bangladesh episode. And it's like a really popular like summer drink. It's chilled. And uh, you know, you throw in some saffron, some pistachios. But point being, I'm just not a, I'm just not really a fan of it. It's really popular in Bulgaria, so you know you got to. That being said, though, when you combine a spoonful of the yogurt with the salad, not bad, not bad at all. That's the preferred way to have the yogurt if I was gonna eat this in the future, which I, I'm definitely gonna eat. This. this is like my new salad right here, because like overall the ingredients was like. I think six bucks and I still have like all of this right and then oh that's this that's not including these two but in terms of the vegetables like the it was like six bucks for all the vegetables yeah it's just good it's just good like there's nothing else to say about that other than it's just plain old good so shops of salad two thumbs up so let me know down in the comments if you are from Bulgaria how you make it in your neck of the woods and I'm pretty sure they probably make uh, some variation of this dish in other Balkan nations. So if you are from a Balkan nation and you happen to watch this, let me know how you guys make it in your country. And also, what are some other Bulgarian dishes I should try? I really tried to find some Lukanka. I went to like three different European markets. None of them had it. And it wasn't until I looked on Amazon and it was like a two week delivery. And I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't research this far enough in time like i should have ordered it like two weeks ago so then i could have it here today but i didn't i didn't look up i didn't look for it on amazon until like four or five days ago and by then i was like okay there's no way i'm gonna have this in time so apologies but i did try eating some lukanka with this which is uh, a bulgarian sausage like salami type thing next up we have burkina faso yes we're back in africa it's been a while i think the last african country we did was angola and that might be the only African country we've done up until now, right? Yeah, I think... Is there another African nation we've done? I feel like we've had, you know, because of the Caribbean, we've had, like, a lot of African-influenced dishes. But in terms of straight-up African cuisine, we've only had Angola. So... And I think Burkina Faso is, like... Because Angola is kind of like a, a deserty nation, if I remember correctly. Whereas I'm pretty sure Burkina Faso's on the west, like not north northwest coast, but like you know where Ghana and Ivory Coast and like more of a tropical. Pretty sure Burkina Faso is somewhere in, in the I'm just gonna put up a map. I'm just gonna put up a map. That of uh, where I think Burkina Faso is, that area. So it's more tropical, probably some fish vibes. Maybe, maybe this is where I make seafood for the first time. I don't 
don't want to. <laughs> I really don't want to. But also, like, could I find? Is it possible to get like African fish here? Is it? Because if I was gonna do it, I would want to do it right, right? And I feel like to do it right, you'd have to get like whatever fish are native to that area of the world. And I'm guessing it's not salmon. Yeah. If you are from Burkina Faso or a country bordering Burkina Faso and there's a dish you'd like me to try, let me know down in the comments below and I will look into it. Other than that, my name is Vasil. This is Vasil Eats the World, Bulgaria. Until next time, peace.